Good evening and welcome to this evening's lecture. Uh, tonight is a Friends of the Hong Kong Museum of Art activity, but it's also, I see, a family gathering. Um, we are delighted to have Mimi Wong Hong uh, to give us a lecture this evening. Now, Mimi was born in Shanghai and with her family, she lived in Hong Kong and also Tokyo, where she graduated from the Sacred Heart International School in Tokyo in 1967. Then she received a BS in Economics and Finance from Purdue University, Indiana in 1971, and an EMBA from the Changgong Graduate School of Business in Beijing in 2005. Now, Mimi served has served as a founding chairman of two publicly listed companies, and she was also director of Donghua Group of Hospitals for four years. In the art world, she is best known for having formed one of the most important collections of classical Chinese furniture, and published, with the assistance of Robert Ellsworth, two volumes on the Hong Collection in 1996 and 2005, respectively. Mimi has also served as a trustee of the Friends of the Hong Kong Museum of Art for many years. This evening, Mimi will be talking about her great-grandfather, the renowned calligrapher, painter, devout Buddhist, philanthropist, and businessman, banker, Wang Yiting, who is also known to many of us by his artistic name, Wang Zhen, and also as Bai Long Shan Ren, and sometimes has signed his name, Zhejiang Wu Xing Ren. We will hear about Wang Yiting's eventful and remarkable life in Shanghai, Hong Kong, and Japan, and the many ways in which his art, his religious beliefs, and his philanthropy touched those around him during a turbulent era of Chinese history. Please help me welcome Mimi Hong. Thank you, Nancy. You know, um, actually, what I should do now is give all of you a big smile. First is, on behalf of my great-grandfather, he must be smiling in his graves. He's very grateful that all of you would come and listen to me talking, because I've not, not met him ever. You know, he was born in 1867 and passed away in 19... Uh, 38. It's been a while, 77 years since he passed away. And uh, we are still gathered here to talk about him. It's something I don't think not many people could achieve. Uh, when, when we were little at home, my father would always get us to sit on these little stools, and then he would bring out a little box of a uh, trunk and then he would show us some paintings, you know, explaining us to the family histories. So over time, I thought I learned a little bit of Chinese painting, you know. So when I graduated from university, I came out and um, I said, if I get to see some painting in the market, I'm going to buy, you know. So when I bought the first painting, I was very happy and I showed to my parents and to my disappointment, they told me it was an imitation. <laughs> and uh, I was so hopeful that my parents was wrong, you know. Unfortunately, they keep telling me I was wrong. So um, eventually my parents explained to me what I have to look for in the painting. You know, it's um, the energy, the strokes, and when something that can hang up and you can see the, the images very, clearly the, the message they're trying to convey, that's what you have to look for, you know. So I keep opening my eyes and try not to make the same mistakes whenever I see another painting in the market. So um, over, over time, you know, it's, um, so we get to a lot of family gatherings and then um, my father would always talk with our relatives about our great-grandfather. So it goes on and on and until when we were in um, high school times, we were in Japan. So we run into our other cousins in Japan and we would go for dinners. After dinner is Wang Yiting again, you know. So as a teenager, we thought, do, do we have enough of Wang Yiting, you know? It's uh, 
how about something about us, you know, about something of our future or something. I was, we were just getting a little bit, um, this, you know, bored, you know, that's the word for as a teenage, you know. But I think looking back now, it's good that they told us so many. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to say anything here, you know. But now, uh, what I do is I would get from my children because they were so kind. They said, Mom, oh, of course I'll come when you talk, you know. Then the next thing I got a phone call from, Mom, you know your great-grandfather has passed away for a long, long time. What does it really affect our life, you know? So I said, oh, um, you know, I don't, I remember um, one time I went to um, New York when Robert Ellsworth invited me for his uh, party in his plush New York apartment. He was giving a big party and uh, I was sitting next to David Rockefeller. And during the conversation, I, I turned and I said to him, I said, oh, you know, uh, my son at that time was in high school. So I said, you know, um, my son can read an annual report. He can analyze it. I figure, you know, he'll be impressed because he is such a big name and a financial person, you know. But the thing is, he turned around and said to me, he says, tell your son to study more history. I was actually taken back for quite a number of years. I was wondering why he always say that, you know. But the more I think of it now, I realize we really have to know our history and our heritage, where we come from, and um, gradually understand how the world evolves and how we can make a better world ourselves and learn from our ancestor what is good, what they have done, what we can, what we can um, do better for our world to, to further ourselves. So um, this is the beginning. So we better go on the slides now. This one is, um, is uh, Wu Changshi. He wrote about Wang Yiting. It's um, Bai Long San Ren Xiao Zhuan. He talked about Wang Yiting because they were good friends. So he talked about uh, Wang Yiting when he was from uh, Wu Changshi was 82. He wrote this whole thing when he was 82. Can you imagine all the strength? and the um, consistency and all the nice writing, it's not easy, you know. Um, we couldn't write straight, even at our young age, right? Not alone, they're 82. Now, when you look at this, you would see he talk about um, Wang Yiting, and um, of all the things he did, he, he did a lot of philanthropy work, and he always believed that he, he was very, lucky that he was from a simple family, and yet he managed to accumulate um, some position uh, in the society, and yet he would do whatever he can to give back to the society. And he did, um, in China at that time, he did, I think a lot of the work on that part is, is, is um, philanthropy. Uh, philanthropy, I will show you later on in the, in the the organization you would see that, that he was involved in. But from here, um, you would see, you would see, you know, like he would talk about whatever he did. But one part I want to show you, they were pointing me, he said he has four sons, because actually he has three, but there was another one, is an adopted son. And then he mentioned about my great grandfather, he's his Chen Dao. He can paint, and he's, he's like, he can paint like his father. That, like uh, Wang Yiting. So this is nice to see in, in this passage that they compliment my, my grandfather, okay? The, the son, one of the son. Um, and uh, then um, this is actually a picture of um, Wang Yiting and then it's a brief description of what he is as um, Nancy was just saying. Um, he did a lot of work in, in China, in Shanghai, in that community in that time, and had business with um, J Japan. Um, and he has a hobby as, at a young age, learning how to paint. So the painting he does is about 
character uh, persons and flowers and animals and, and, and Buddhist figures. So we will see a lot of that later on. I have um, compiled something in the end and you would see a lot of these um, paintings. Um, and this is actually is a, is a pagoda in the, in the garden, that his home in the, in the early days. I think now it's been destroyed. Only the main house is left in, in Shanghai. Okay, this, this is a picture of um, the um, three sons. This is the oldest son, this is the second son, and this is my, our great-grandfather, my, my great-grandfather. Um, my grandfather, I'm sorry, my grandfather, the three sons. And this is Wang Yiting and his wife. This is, I think, the, the later part, the, another, I think the, uh, the mother passed away and this is another wife. Then this is the, um, I think it's the, grand, it's the daughter of this son, I think. This, I'm not too sure of all the details because, you know, I listen to my father say sometimes I forget and get confused. But I know this one is my father. This picture was taken. <laughs> this one was taken when he came to Hong Kong with my uh, great grandfather. You know, in the late, very later part of his life, he he had to he had to live in Hong Kong because it was kind of rough living in Shanghai. You know, with the war and all that. So uh, he he just wanted to stay away. You know, uh, so he brought from each of his son one child. So my father is only one. One, one from this, my grandfather. I want to, sh you want to see how handsome he looks, right? In a white suit. He's the playboy of the family, okay? <laughs> and then, but he's the artistic one. I'll show you some artistic work he does. Now, this is the oldest son. Now, he is, the, um, he is trained to be a, in the politics in that area, because he was sent to uh, Japan for military training in Japan, where he becomes classmate with Jiang Jiesi. So they were classmates um, in in uh, in Japan with the training, and after that they come back to Shanghai. And at that time, Jiang Jiesi was a more of a simple family background. Then, um, having started everything, the revolution, he stayed in our family for over six months uh, because classmates, you know, so you stay in a, so it's actually, um, you know, how classmates influence <laughs> your life in, in, in the, and then this son is, he is more involved in the business and actually um, that's why my cousin's here, he's the uh, owner of the Royal Hotel in uh, Macau. <laughs> They're more in the business. Uh, so this is the, okay, this is only a very rough general. Now this is the, they want the family tree. So I found in the book, they are all, all in, there's many books on the table here that you can look later if you want to. Uh, this is about our great grandfather Wang Yiting, and then this is the brothers, the two brothers he has. And this talk about his life generally a little bit. And then this talk about his three sons, the one that you just see in the picture. And then um, this is my, f uh, my father. And this is actually father of my, my cousin. And then you see the, this one, Xiao, Xiao Qin is my cousin here. Uh, yes, the, the royal, royal hotel owner. Yes, <laughs> that's my kind. That's the one here, and uh, I'm here. So this one, you see, I'm exposing my <laughs> age. <laughs> okay, okay, isn't this beautiful? Now this is my mother. This is my mother's wedding picture. I found these um, when. My mother passed away, and you know, and then I gathered these, and I thought they were lovely pictures, and I kept them. And I didn't realize I have the chance to show all of you today. Now, you see the crowd there, all surrounding him. This is 1944 in Shanghai, and it's, uh, I think they said it's the war time or something. It's a very rough time, but he still managed to have a very lavish um, wedding um, because of Wang Yiting, you know, a social status, and then. That's my father and mother here. 
And then this one is my mother putting on the seal. But I want you to see behind here. You see the painting? That's the painting of um, my great-grandfather. And it looks to me, it's like a um, goddess of harmony there. He has painted a goddess of harmony. You see those little birds and the, the two figures in the back. You know, it's a good luck for a, a wedding, you know. So I thought I'll, I'll put this in. And this, play, this little picture here is, um, is um, uh, our home in, in Shanghai, the one that uh, we, we entertained uh, Einstein later on, on his visit. I'll tell you a little bit. And if you go to Shanghai now, it's still there. It's uh, become a, a um, government, you know, a, a cultural, what do you call it? I forgot the name. You know, the culture that you cannot tear things down. It's a, it's a, but it, there's so many people living there right now. Nobody can claim it back. I mean, it's too much work. But so you can go, you can go in and look around, you know. And, but the garden is all gone. The garden is all taken up by somebody else over, over time. And there are other buildings except the main building and the front door is there. Okay, this one is... Um, uh, I'm trying to show you is the um, things that one of the very important things my, my great grandfather did in Japan. He they had a very very bad earthquake in 1923, and uh, it was like I think if you read uh, see one of the movie in National Geographic, you will see Tokyo is almost like totally wiped out, and there's so many people got killed. Now. Because Wang Yiting felt he had so much business relationship with Japan over time, he was the first one to initiate, to send uh, rice, send flour, send money to help them to restore, recover themselves. And also he cast a bell. You see that bell in the, in, in the picture here? Now, actually, that bell um, on, on every year, um, September 1st, when they have the earthquake, they would let us, the Wong family, to go and toss the bell. It was sent to the four, when it was first casted, it was sent to the four big famous um, mountains in China. It's uh, uh, Putuo San, Jiuhua San, uh, Wu Tai San, Nge Mei San, uh, for 49 days of prayer, each mountain. And then um, after saying that, they, they shipped the bell to Japan. Now that's for, the, for all the dead souls in, in disaster in, in Japan. It was so big. I mean, it was really devastating for that period. Uh, so they tried to calm the spirit that was just a sudden death, you know, so that, that he did. So then every year we get to toss our bell, or the Wong family. I tossed it one time when I was in high school in, in Japan. I couldn't find a picture, otherwise I would show you. But I went back for a visit in 85, uh, 83, and then this one is um, two, two, uh, 2013. It was 90 years. So we went back to toss the bell on September 1st, and it was in the newspaper, and then they sent me keep for memory, and then I get the opportunity to show you. It's a, it's a Japan lo local Chinese paper. Now this is the memorial site of the of the of the bell, where where they have in in Tokyo right now in Asak Asakusa there, and this is the address there. And this is the invitation in Japanese. Uh, you can read it. It's uh, for the 90 year, you know, tossing the bell event. That is, uh, you see, it's. See the bell. This is in in Chinese. If you if you can read Chinese, this is the bell, and then uh, you would ring it. The time is eleven, uh, September first, eleven hour, and then it's exactly the time is eleven fifty eight minute. That's the time when the earthquake. So we we will do do the tossing the bell, and then the place where it is, and then um, and then all the details, the invitation, and, and this is all in Japanese. So I thought I would show you in this little bit. And then this is the last time
we were there, all the family members. Um, me, my brother, it's my cousin in, in um, Japan, and then there's my brother's son, my sister, and their children, and the wife, and the, so only the Wong family. So the wife, if they're not Wong, they don't get to toss the balance, sorry. <laughs> so, so we see some of that. So this one is the one I tell you in 1983, I went back with my two girls, uh, Renee and Nina, to the site with my, to see my uncle in Japan. Now he passed, passed away now. Um, he took us there. We want to see this memorial place. So we took some pictures there. And this is the, in, inside the memorial hall, they have the picture of our great grandfather and then the paintings that they hang on the wall, you know, I mean, you know, at that time we just casually take it, so it's only partial picture, you know. But, but you can see here, it's, I, you can see a very vague figure of one of the mortals, the Tikwai Lei, you can see that here. But I'll, I'll have a bigger picture painting later of one of my cousin's big collection, I'll show you later on. Now this is um, this this thick picture is these two pictures were given to me just recently uh, because of this speech and then they my my cousin uh, from Shanghai, in Shanghai he went he went to um, uh, Putosan and then they they saw this um, writing of my great grandfather on these rocks and he took picture and sent to me so and then this one actually. Um, on the right hand side, this one is, is another temple. It's actually right near our home in the one you just saw. It's, um, it's another Fa Zhang Jiang Si. It's a, it's a temple there, uh, quite big. And then when you go there, you would see a lot of calligraphy of our great grandfather on the walls. And then this is the history how this temple was started and built with my, our, because of our great grandfather. It's too fine a print, and it's not you know it's too little time we have for an hour to to go into all the detail. But if you go visit there one day, you can look for these things. Now this one, um, okay, when our great grandfather passed away in 1938, Jiang Jiesi have some memorial for him. This is the plaque that was sent to him. Uh, it says Qing Biao Liang Jie. It's it's for Yi Ting Xianzhen, and then the bottom here is Jiang Jie Si. But because of the difficult time and all that in China and all that, so I think they try to damage the things a little bit. So I think one of our cousins is put them in the in the storage just to avoid avoid further damage. You know, maybe when time changes, then he can e eventually bring them out again. But there's another one. Um, see, this one on the left is is Guo Ming Zheng Fu Ling. This is from um, Jiang Jie Si, and actually, he he has it made in 1938 when our great grandfather passed away, and um, and he has Yu Ren send the flag to him. And here it says about all the things that our great-grandfather did on um, um, philanthropy and all this, all these uh, safe funds that he was trying to keep for, um, for the um, salvation of all these um, very rough time. You know, you have to think in those times is the falling of the Qing dynasty and then the war between Dr. Sun Yat-sen and then Jiang jie -si and then the, 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 you know, all this history in that period of time is, is quite a difficult time to be in, you know. And so, but, but I think our great grandfather did play quite a big role in, in it. So, so it says here, he says, he, he has contributed one, one yuan for that time. So I don't know how they calculate that. Maybe they never learned how to say e at that time. They only say so one one yeah, is plenty plenty a lot of money because whatever he had made at that time, he was able to help. He, he helped the revolution. He helped 
you know, the people, the, all, all, the, all the poor suffering life. He helped a lot of things. You will see, I, I'll show you uh, the other organization that he's helping. Uh, um, and then this one is, the, is uh, when, from the Japanese here, is uh, in memory when he passed away. They gave him this plaque to, this one is, is there, is it on the, on the grave, you know. So that you can read, it's, um, it's, um, it's not, it's, it's a Japan Chinese uh, good friends, friend, okay, China, Japan China Friendship Association inscription. So, so it's, um, they put it in a stone inscription to put, put on the grave. Now, this one um, is a picture in the book that they have compiled. I thought it might be good to just briefly look at because of the time constraint. It says here, it says, because of the influence of his grandmother, he studied this, um, oh, I don't know how to say it in English now. It's the Hao Jing, Xiao Jing, is how do you be respectful to the family and the elders and all that. So he was taught at a young age by his grandmother. And then, um, and then he learned, you see, he learned foreign language. So he learned foreign language. And then he was admitted to this place as an apprentice. This place is actually a painting, a painting mounting place. You know, in those times, uh, Painting is very popular. Everybody paints. And after you paint, you would mount them. So he was learning his apprenticeship in a, a painting mounting <laughs> shop. So that's why he was exposed to see all kinds of paintings. And that's how he acquired the skills and the knowledge how to paint. So because he learned how to, how to paint, he, he was um, uh, I think he, uh, Nian gave, you know, take him as a student. And why Nian? Because he learned the, Nian can draw the fold of the clothes, you know, the clothing, how it falls, the fold. That's a very difficult painting skill to draw. Not a lot of people learn, but he learned that from Nian. So, so uh, that's why you see a lot of in these figures later on, how he expand on it. So. And then also he's talk about he, he worked as a he see it's his in here and then uh, become a student and then his his art becomes very improved and then when he was eighteen <clears throat> he he was joined this um, Japanese uh, shipping company and by the time he was thirty he became the company's um, real um, manager of this company. And then uh, it was in the electric, ele electricity, not electronics, electricity, <laughs> appliance, and then uh, insurance. And then um, it becomes, he was a very, very big entrepreneur in, the, in that period of time. So, but here, I didn't, when I, you know, my limited Chinese and also the exposure, I just realized this, person that they are taking a picture of this Wang Xing is a very famous uh, revolution person in that time. So this picture was taken a whole group. So it says the third, the, in the first row, left number eight person, Wang Xing. So you can wonder, is this one, Wang Xing. And then the nine is this other name. You know, I mean, you probably know better than I do all this famous person and all these famous, and then the 11 is our grandfather is this one. And the 14 is another name. You know, I mean, I don't know enough history <laughs> to comment, but you would probably know better, but I, okay, this other one, this one is, um, see, this is, um, this is um, the attendance of the, uh, uh, buying the local goods, and, and then all these important people in the front sitting there is Kong Changxi, is the one that just have the auction right now, right, in the Christie's. <laughs> uh, there are all these important, Cha Yuanpei, you know, and then Wang Yiting is here. 
So they are all important. And, and I was told recently, because of this trying to compile things together, they were told, I was told that, I think it's, it was Tsai yin or something that decided that when Einstein come to Shanghai to visit for the day, that they would visit Wang Yiting because he's more interesting and more to tell him. Somebody was telling me that um, only a few days ago, you know. So, but you can see this one is uh, this bookstore. You see it around in Hong Kong. This has been around for a long time. So we, they were in, involved in this um, for a long time. So this. This is a, in a rough time. Everybody is just sitting in the courtyard taking pictures, but <laughs> but it's a you can see it's all the district manager. See, welcome all the district manager of the area. Maybe all over China for a lot of places. So they, they take pictures. It's, it's a very simple lifestyle there. And now this one I want to show you is the friend of uh, our great grandfather is. Xie uh, Jiabao he, he, he sent this picture as a gift to him. His, uh, his son, uh, grandson is here, Michael. Um, so they were so kind to, to give me this picture that, that Wang Yiting likes to give pictures and, and write you know, on it. And then this one is a, is a talk about the Xinhai Geming, you know, the revolution. And uh, he 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 participate in this Tongmen Hui. I don't even know how to translate that. This is the the core of the revolution in that time. Uh, and then they involved with all these uh, finance and newspapers, and then supporting this um, Wu Chang Xi. This is a very important you know events. So this one, oh, this one I want to show you is uh, Dr. Sun Yat-sen and our great-grandfather had former company. Now they had former company on trying to in plan, investigate, and introduce all kind of business, and then try to build all the business direct or indirectly uh, and through financing, I guess, here. Yeah. And then also, um, uh, and then they were doing the finance and the trust business. And then Dr. Sun Yat-sen returned to Shanghai in, on this day. And then they were having in the meeting in this head office, trying to establish this Zhongguo Xinye Gongsi. And then they had the list of the names of people who was there. Sun Wen is Dr. Sun Yat-sen. And then our great grandfather is here, okay? And then, and then they're talking about the funding and all these things. And then they says here, if in case, you know, every uh, when you have the meeting, is is that Dr. Sun Yat-sen is the chief in charge. And then, if in case he's not available, Wang Yiting will be the in charge to to hold the hold the meeting. And and um, so then they talk about all these details, and then. And then later on, because of the Song An, is um, then it was um, Yuan Sikai those time. I think there was an assassination because some Yuan Sikai knows that he's not well supported. And then this Song is going for a very important meeting that would be dangerous for him. So he had this person assassinated. So everybody start to vanish. So Dr. Sen left for Japan, and then my grandfather lay low because you know time are very, you know, uncertain. So this is a document that is in the newspaper. We thought, you know, it's um, sure. And then this is one of the hospital that he had. He had, uh, the, you know, con uh, contributed, um, and this is the expense account. I just take a picture of that one so you to see just a general idea what their spending is. Oh, this is the list of all the all the, all the finance. 
，甚至常常亲自奔赴灾区，实施散放救灾物品。据王一婷河州寒山芦苇龛灾记所记述，他在赈灾图中所见，沿途低地破，房屋飘流，灾民均居危窝、啊，风雨交作，船从田中行，城中一水深三尺，乘木盆立长街，浮水而行。So we just want to show you of all the different organizations. It's just too much for me to read out, so I just showed a little clipping of the one he has been participated. Now this one is talking about Einstein visiting China. Actually, is he he was in in Shanghai only for one day on his way to、uh, Japan for a lecture. He was arranging with Beijing University for a lecture too, but it hasn't really confirmed yet. It, and then he went to Japan first. You know, in those times, you have to take the ship. So he got one day in in Shanghai. So one day in that time, he, he was he found out that he just you know it takes a few days to travel on the on the ship at those times. So by the time he get to Shanghai, it was announced he got he won the Nobel Prize for that.、Um, Something relativity or something. I, you know, I'm mean, very technical. I, I, you know, if you turn on the uh, 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 web, I think they'll tell you all the details. You know, I mean, with all these things, I can't remember all the details. Sorry about that. <laughs> you just click on it. it they, they will give you a lot more detail. But this is something. This, this, this one. Our father always treasure it. Our father gave a copy to each one of us. Each we are four of us, and we always have a copy with us. And so this time we really get to to show to everybody, and、uh, and then we realize it's all in the in the web that now it's a different world now, right? You get to see all this information, so、mm -hmm. you can look at that too. Uh, see, great grandfather took a picture with all of them, and this is. Einstein here in the middle, my great grandfather, and they talk about this little girl who speaks three kinds of language:、um, English, French, and German. And he would do a recital when he was there in our home, and and Einstein was very impressed. And oh, they have lunch at Yiping Xiang for lunch, and then they went to see a opera, Chinese opera, and then they went to our home. And then our, our great grandfather showed him what he has collected over time, and and and、uh, Einstein was very impressed. So、um, it was a very nice,、um, eventful day. I mean, for such an important person that come to Shanghai, he would stop over in our home, and、uh, we find it really great honor. So we always talk about it with great pride. Now this one is、um, when my great grandfather was. Seventy years old, so、um, he has a big birthday party. Then、uh, you see that man is、um, Mei Lan Fang. He's a famous、um, opera and、um, singer. So he came for congratulate. So my great grandfather immediately painted a、uh, um, Mei Hua for him, you know, and then. This is our handsome grandfather. <laughs> Looking on.、Yeah. Now this one is、um, something is something new discovery. Now actually,、um, soon after Nancy asked me to talk, I got a, an a email from from Becky, this lady、um, who said she went for a. a, a, a Because they will do a document for the Dongliang Ge Yuan, you know, in the Happy Valley, and then in, during the process, she found this painting. They, they asked the, the Dongliang Ge Yuan person, said, "What do you have there that you think is very special?" And they said, "I have this very special painting of a, a, a Guan Yin here." So she took a picture, and she didn't realize 
in the beginning it was um, says Wang Zhen. Didn't, you know, it's been a while since I last saw her. So she went home and she found it was my great grandfather. So she emailed me. So we, I went down with Michael and his sister Teresa Bartholomew. She was there, and it's really beautiful Guanyin. It was painted in 1938. Actually, that's the last year he, before he died. He was in Hong Kong. Uh, he, he, this day, you see, is February 19. That's the day of the Guanyin birthday. Because how I know is my daughter Nina's birthday is the same day. <laughs> so I know this is the Guanyin day. I said, oh my god, I didn't realize. Oh, such a nice painting with that day mark on it, you know. So. This is behind the altar if you go to um, the temple in Happy Valley. And, and um, this other two Duilian that they have is in the library. I think it's more um, in the library you, you probably have to ask to be admitted because I'm not sure if the library is open. The, the lady in, in charge was supposed to come today. She's not well, so she just texted me that she, she has excused herself. So this is something um, very, we're very proud of because we didn't expect a, a painting hiding in one of these temples for so many years, like a family reunion, you know? After, since 1938, that's been a while, 77 years to know it's sitting in somewhere in Hong Kong. Now, this is a um, thesis that have been written by the PhD student of the Chinese University, uh, Zhang Jie. And she, ha she was telling me, actually, she, she has spent four to five years trying to do the research and study on my great-grandfather. And, and this, I have a copy here, if you would like to take a look at it. And it's really well prepared. And they were, they were doing it on the angle of the religious aspect. And the professor was, you know, wanted to come that day, but today, um, but unfortunately, he has another previous com commitment in Shanghai, so he couldn't make it back in time. Uh, so it's very impressing to, impressive to know that somebody would spend five years of their life to document what your great grandfather did, you know, and only published last year, it's December. And now this is another one. It was in 2000. It's in University of Hong Kong. They had another one, the case study of Wang, Wang Yiting. Uh, it, it was published. So this is two theses published by PhD student. And the university must have found them something important that they think they want to keep a record. So we were most grateful and thankful that this was being done. Oh, this one. I want to show you this picture. I want to, I can show you the picture in this, because you know, it's a nice picture, but then I think it's, it's very hard to, to see them here, because it was sent to me um, by my cousin in, in uh, LA of my, oh, I have to read this from the script then, but he writes, let me give you so you can look at it. This one is uh, Wang Yiting and then Qing Yao Sun. They are all Qing Dynasty, um, very famous uh, painter. And then plus my grandfather, Wang Jimei. That's, he, he, he and also Wu Changzi has write some inscription. But that was the, the one, the, the pine and the house it was my grandfather when he was only 13. He painted that. So this pine and then this house was painted by my grandfather when he was 13. So my cousin in, um, in, uh, in um, LA said, you got to show this. <laughs> he said, this is something that you have to have talent in the family to paint like that. You know, it's not easy. Um, 
And then this one is something I found later. Actually, I have it. Um, it's my grandfather again. This is when he was 14. He painted this flower. It's a very pretty painting, so I thought I would show you that. 13 and this 14, he was painting this kind of a painting of good stand. He's not the Wang Yiting, but the son is doing such a nice things, you know. Now, this one is my parents. You saw the wedding picture earlier, right? Then this is my parents. They later part, they were in, in Vancouver, and then my, my parents always go to, a, um, my, my father went to uh, St. John's University in Shanghai, so they have a class reunion all the time in, in Vancouver. And my father wrote this and, and gave them as a, as a memory or whatever, it's a gift to the school, you know, so it's in the newspaper. And he cut it and then he put it on the table and I, I kept it so this time I can show you, you know. So I thought that's something nice that um, the father, the, grand, uh, the, the, the son and the grandson can do a little bit of writing to show you. Now this part is um, pictures I found in the, in, the, in the books that my cousins were giving me. These were um, these famous painter. Now, my our grandfather is, great grandfather is here, right? And then you see here all these famous person, um, Wang Binghong. It's I don't know how to pronounce his name. So Zhang Xian, I don't know how to pronounce so. Zhang Xian Zi, huh? And then here left eight. Is Zhang Da Qian, the famous person now. Left eight is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, the one with the beard. <laughs> He's standing behind. <laughs> so, so just to show you they, they are always gathering and doing building art in, in, in Shanghai in those times. And this is another gathering that they go to Japan, a group of them go to Japan for the purpose of um, art and uh, for the Japanese and then a scattering, you know, it's a, that a great grandfather has done a lot on onto the Chinese art world. Now, okay, now I start showing you all these um, paintings that I have selected over, you know, in the, in, the, in the books that I found that they have published over time. Now this is another Guanyin, very pretty Guanyin with the Lotus on the on the foot, standing on the lotus leaf. It's very pretty. And this was done in 1922. And you can see the strokes, the lines, the four four of the clothes. It's, it's um, as you can see, um, it's it's not somebody. Some this talent is 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 not just easily acquired. You know, I mean, you can draw lines, but. Does it hang like a piece of cloth? Then that's another question, right? <laughs> so you see some more of this. Next. Now this is another one. He, he draws a lot of these. Uh, he draws every, every day. I, I heard my father said, because they went to Hong Kong together. My, my father stayed with my great-grandfather in Hong Kong. And he said he always paints, and he can paint very fast. He can, he can you know, he has this thinking, and then he would do it very easy without you know, making lines or something. He was just drawing. Now, this is another Muliang's Buddha. And this is holding a Ri in the hand. And you see the coloring and the folding of the clothes, you know. And, the, and it's like really a, a Buddha sitting in front of you, you know, not, not something falling, but some somebody is really like the that has the energy of a long old Buddha has um, wisdom. This is another one. The Buddha is holding a scroll. This see this this is a different posture sitting and then look at the lines of the folding of the clothes and the see when when my father always say you have to capture the energy of that painting, see how well they are, you know, because there's, um, people like to imitate, but you have to know how to differentiate, you know. So they always say, you, you see more and you compare more. I'm, so I'm trying to select some 
nice ones. I hope, you know, at least it can give you some impression. And then this is, okay, this is painting of a um, Bu Dai Huo Sang. And then, see, he writes with a lot of this uh, philosophy on, on it. You walk with your bag, and you sit with your bag, and you put down your bag, and then it's so free, you know. <laughs> this is... Um, this is a very good, you know, saying. And then this is Wu Chang Su make his writing here, sign. And uh, so they they are good friends. So he one would paint and the other would write and draw on it. So this was done in 1920. This is another one. Is the Wu Liang Su? It's uh, done in 1923. So it's, it's, um, it's, you know, when you see a monk, you, you see a monk, you don't see something else. You know, the energy you, you see from the picture is a monk. You know, otherwise, sometimes if, if we are asked to draw a monk, it might look, doesn't portray the energy of that picture. So there's something of Wang Yiting is, he is really talented in, in his own right that he can do it. He learned it in such a young age to acquire the skills is really it's very special. Now, this one is um, Jesus Christ. We didn't expect he would draw Jesus Christ. <laughs> so this is Jesus Christ. This is, can you imagine? He's very open-minded because I know he speaks English because I was told, Therese Bartholomew, that the grandfather meet with our great grandfather. They would speak English because one speak Cantonese. My great grandfather speaks Chinese, so they can't communicate. So what they do is they speak English. So, so they, so this is Jesus Christ. So I was told by my cousin to put this up because, um, uh, especially the one uh, Sandy in 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 Seattle, he says, you should put this up. This is uh, very special, you know. So, because you would think he would only paint um, Chinese figures, but this is a Western figure that he's very open-minded to. Okay. Now, this one, I, I think we picked it because um, we thought that bird, the phoenix, is very pretty and uh, nice perching on the, on, the, on the tree and also good luck, you know, so. so. Now, this one, a lot of writings, you know. I mean, you know, I, but I know he's painting Yuan Bernian, his teacher, that's why I put it here. And it's very stylishly done with the bamboo and all these writings. Now you have to really spend time to, you know, read word by word to find out what, what is all the details saying, okay? Because we have, you know, I, I cannot, I'm not qualified to <laughs> describe all that. <laughs> I need a professor. <laughs> now, this is, um, I was looking at this earlier. I think this is like Aladdin. I like things <laughs> But this is in Chinese style, you know. It's, um, you know, it's so nicely done, you know. Uh, you know, he has all these stories, wide variety of stories and, and, um, uh, thinkings that he was trying to portray in his in his drawings, so we really enjoy seeing it. Now this one is the Ji Gong. This was drawn in 1922, and Ji Gong is supposed to help you resolve all the troubles and all that, right? And uh, it's very nice. And then, now this one is scary, actually, I thought, <laughs> staring at you, but very, and very much a lot of energy, very powerful, huh? And then look at the drapes of the clothing. This is something, I, I don't really see much another artist can really do that, in, in that freestyle, and it's in the size, you know, of, of this painting. It's not easy to draw, and then if you just do it very, in half an hour or something, you can paint something. It's, it's something in your head. You can draw a person that you think that's what you should look like. It's not easy. You've you got to have some kind of a, a talent, more than a talent. 
Now, this one is the Damor, is the oil painting. I, I know, can I tell them you, you have this pretty piece? My cousin, Michael, has this special oil painting, Damor, in oil painting of my great grandfather, my cousin, Michael. So I thought I would show off that. That's really nice. And, uh, you know, it's the Western oil painting, which is not many, you know, and uh, it's yet very powerful, huh? Now, this is another goddess of harmony, um, which I think a great grandfather always loved to paint on for good luck. And then another one. You have another one. This is another goddess of harmony that he drew in 1919. This is, this is in, um, in Tokyo right now. It's with our cousin in Tokyo in the Hong Kong Garden, the restaurant. They have a restaurant. It's hanging there. So. And then this one is um, Liu Hai, Xi Jing Chen. You know, this Liu Hai is always holding a frog for good luck. So he's holding it in, in the hand. My father said, when you're holding it, the frog is good luck. If you're holding it, that means you have all the luck in your hand. If you are chasing it, still you're wishing, you know, you're still waiting for it, you know. So he said, this is good in the hands, you know. Now, this is the special one for my cousin, is uh, Te Guai Li, that I was talking earlier. Uh, this one is very big size, 120 cm and 247. It's, it's very big. Um, I think two of that Queen Elizabeth painting size. And can you imagine drawing this in all the details? He's very proud. I think, I think our professor, George, went to Seattle and looked at this painting, right? Professor. Yeah, it's, um, I, I drove my father from Vancouver to, to Seattle to look at this painting from, from Sandy. It's very, very, very spectacular. I mean, you know, for somebody to paint a figure like this, just freestyle, it's, you know, I mean, how, how do I know what a, is, is this immortal should look like, right? And with these, with these bags and the, things in his hands, you know, like, I don't know what he get this image from, you know, and all this detail. So, now this one, I, I thought it's kind of special, I put this, is, this man is actually holding a needle in his hand, okay? He was saying, like, Han Po Hong Chen is like, the world thinks he's, you know, he sees through everything, and then he has this broken, Poor clothing and trying to stitch with his hand and you know I can't I can't understand all of them you know I mean it's but it's very special but he signed he didn't sign Wang Yiting Wang Zhen but he signed himself as the Puto Ku Xin Puto Ku Xin Puto this is the same painting as the one that we send you on that that um, circular yes. Um, that's, I think, his, um, I think he tried to express something, you know, like in our life, what, you know, it's like a, it's a, it's a journey that you have to experience hardship, difficulties, and all that, and he's trying to do it in, in his own simple form. Now, this is another one, it's the Five Old Man. I thought it's quite nice, quite um, detailed done. And this one is a uh, sumo tending the ships. This is a very famous story, old story. And all the ship here. And then this one is um, oh the Zhong Kui. Zhong Kui, he's catching the, the evil in his hand and you know like trying to beat him up in his own way. This was 1917. Xiang'e. And this is another style. This is he did it in, in a very dramatic red zhuzar, and then the, the ghost, 
evil is just hiding behind them. So, hmm. so it's very powerful, you know, the beard and the coloring. This is another one, and then they have a. I don't know. Is this a spider or what was it? Spider, right? So he has this. You know, you see all the variety. The way he paints is very, very unique in his own way. Each pa painting is very different from the other. So how do you get this intuition? I mean, we have no clue. But, but he does have talents. That's for sure. Now this one is. Um, I thought it's very cute to to end. It's. Um, painting uh, of the children. It's for the new year, they are doing firecracker and then uh, doing drums and then playing in, on, on the road. So this is, and then I'll give you a, a small video clip of uh, only two, three minutes of his painting you would see because this is uh, from Michael. Uh, they, they had the video camera then, so we were able to see how he paints. Well, in those times, they don't have music, so it's just um, just um, silent. So you see all the paper piling on the on the side. So he does paint, you know. He not just he just paints every day with a lot of painting on, on, around him, papers, and hanging on the walls. You see on the, on the wall there? That's the, that's the, um, say, uh, the third son, right? The second son, right? The one holding the painting. The, the one standing there. This, this, this is the, uh, say that. That's your, your grandfather. See, this is, okay, Michael's um, grandfather. That's how we got this video, because uh, he had the video, so he took the video and then he gave it to us. So we, we, he was Comprador for Hong Kong, and our grandfather, great grandfather, was Comprador for China. So they're good friends. So he he went to China with this video camera at that time. So we are able to capture a little bit. Of course, those are early days, and it's not so advanced like now. So um, we just. No sound. <laughs> okay, stop talking. So we. Oh, I think you asked them better. I think in China, in Suzhou, near Suzhou, I think in China, yeah. Yeah. In Suzhou, I think, yeah. It's near Suzhou. They have a big grave there, actually. But still, you know, those two, two stones I show you, actually, they send the photos to me when they know I'm talking, but they were hiding. They're not taking out the one that John Jess gave, gave to our great-grandfather because they're afraid that it would be damaged, you know. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I have to ask my cousins, see if they will do a zanan. <laughs> I have to ask my cousin, they, they are in, interested to do zana. I know you, you, you do art fair every year, right? Yes. Andy is doing art fair every year. 
in, in the convention center. Are many of the paintings still in private hands? Yeah, I think each family has some painting because over time and over the war and all, all because it's, it's difficult to keep all, and he paints, he, he paints a lot and he gave, gave them to, uh, uh, as a gift or he sells them for getting money to do the uh, uh, philanthropy works. So he does like painting, so he, he paints every day, but a variety. And actually, uh, there was one painting sale yesterday by Christie's uh, of a painting that he did for Jiang Jiesi. He gave to Jiang Jiesi. Yesterday, I think it went for two million plus commission. So it went really well. I mean, I only knew somebody told me one piece. The others, I, I don't know. It's, it's, it went, the sale went very well. It's, it's the one that by Kong Chang, uh, Kong Chang Xi, that was family. family, yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe any other question? Where did you find the video? It's uh, in uh, my, Michael family, the, the, they have kept the video, so we are lucky to keep, to get a record of this. Michael's family has it. And the painting in Seattle, is that Seattle Museum of Art? No, in no. private collection. <laughs> private collection, because um, my, uh, c my c cousin, uh, he really proud of this, um, he was able to acquire this. And um, so he, he wanted to show us how it looks like. So I drove my father from Vancouver three hours to see that and then drove back, you know. It's worth the trip. And I think Josh went to uh, Seattle and saw, saw, so he saw this, Professor Josh. Can we read this book, Sasha? Yes, please do. You know, go and read. <laughs> I put there for you to read. Yes. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes, Kathy. Was there any politics involved with your father and him being in Japan and then coming to China? I just wanted, it was just at that time. Okay, yeah, it's difficult. I think in the end it was difficult. You know, I, I, I know um, because actually he was trying to be good friends for both sides and try to make them more friendlier, but it's not easy. And then also, you know, when it becomes politics, everybody has their own agenda. And then Yan Sukai, and then you have the, the Nationalist Party, and then you have the Communist Party. So everybody is a, it's a power struggle. So it was difficult in the end. So that's why he came to Hong Kong and um, stay away from all that in the, in the later years. Because he, he resigned from the Japan, uh, the, the shipping company. He designed his, uh, uh, you know, he didn't want to be part of it. And that's why also in the later years, he was more devoted uh, Buddhist rather than anything um, involved in the politics. So that's why I think you can see in some of these paintings the, the, the thing he says, Kampo Hong Chen, you know, I mean, it's just he's um, see through everything in life to it. It's, it's not easy, you know. And in the end, you, you know, just um, it's not. You can do only so much. <laughs> so it's. A um, I wonder whether his teacher actually was he well known. Yeah, but man, yeah, he is very well known. He is very well known. Actually, last time I was in Chinese University, uh, Professor uh, uh, George, you had shown us an exhibition. There was a painting there. It was very nicely done. So you don't see a lot, but then you get to see sometimes this very nice painting. Yeah, he, he's famous in, I saw in the book there, is he's famous in, in, in the right, painting the technique of the draping of the clothes. See, that's a very, very difficult drawing. Yes, uh, how is Buddhism uh, affect your, your uh, Mr. Wang Yiting? Is it really a, a well, keen he, believer oh, of Buddhism? He, he actually, oh, according to the PhD student, he actually kind of transformed the Buddhism in, in uh, China quite a bit because he, he raised funds and then he'd get money and then he would do uh, charity works. Be before people would have small you know, temples and everybody would do their own thing, but he would have a big 
temple and, and get all the funds, and he would do, do a lot of things directly, so rather than all spread out. So, so he did change the, um, the, the Buddhism a little bit in China in, in some ways, the, the leadership. I think you, know, you have to read the, the, the thesis. You know, it's, a, it's a very, very well-written thesis this time on the religion aspect. Uh, it's, it's very, very um, unusual person. Otherwise, they wouldn't have spent so many years looking into this life. Seventy-two. No, yeah. In those times, you know, it's harder times. Life is harder. I think seventy-two is already considered a very old age. I think he was in Hong Kong, and then um, my my father was with him, and then the other two from two different brothers' uh, grandchildren was with him. And he got later fell sick. He got ill. He got ill. So by the time actually he went back to to Shanghai, he passed away the next day or something already. He was not well. I think he was, yes. It was saying that uh, some of the masterpieces of Wu Changshi was actually the work of your great-grandfather. Do you believe that? Well, you know, actually Wu Changshi, my great-grandfather supported him a lot. And then um, at that time, I think, he was living in the, um, I think was it Hangzhou, Suzhou, in the, and he was more a simple person. But my our great grandfather saw his talent and keep asking him come and stay in in Shanghai and endorse him a lot. But so you you don't see a lot of Wu Changshi's painting of figures, persons, you know. But he write flowers or calligraphy and his specialties. So that's why I said you know my father always said that. Um, Painting the figures, the person is a very very difficult task. Now you see in the in the market all these paintings. They try to imitate and have their own style, but you hardly see somebody who can really draw a person in the real form. You know, they are always too abstract. You know, sometimes so abstract it's easier. Maybe abstract. You know, but I I don't want to offend anybody. But you have to be your own judge and 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 see. You know, that's what my father always say that. You know. Well, if there are no more questions, um, I would like to thank Mimi very much for this fascinating and personal, very meaningful account of your great-grandfather's life. Um, as a small token of appreciation, I'd like to present thank you. this thank uh, you so much. Thank book from thank the friends and a, and a bag to hold it in. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, we really learned a great deal. and. Um, I, I think I would like to learn more when, when um, you know, yeah, have I have a think, chance. Um, next time I have to ask my cousin some more because they have, I've been calling long distance to America and <laughs> Shanghai and everybody's telling me all kinds of things put together. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to do this. And I really have to thank uh, Salon Media who's helping me do this PPT. I mean, they are really fantastic. I mean, otherwise. I don't know how I managed to talk for an hour. <laughs> it's just showing pictures is easier, you know. Yeah. So it's mm -hmm. uh, and also grateful to you for uh, giving us this opportunity. Oh, absolutely. Thank you, so Thank you for sharing with us. Thank yeah. You. Thank you. <laughs>